My Soguru, my okay. granddad, okay. has 84 hectares. Do you think, if you think as a black man, I'm going to have 84 hectares in England? Nah. I One understand. thing I realize about Zimbabweans is they're too nice. Why are Chinese people here? Why are Arabs and here? And they're coming in their numbers. And I'm they're coming you. in their, they're not, they, they, they're here for a reason. What do we have to change as Africans, you know? Mindset. Yeah. Personally, I love Africa. Like me, I've relocated and I'm here. I'm, uh, I'll go back to visit. <laughs> Makadi Sakuru. I'm okay. How are you? What about you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You, you grew up in the UK. Yes. Yes. And uh, suddenly, yes. at the age of 20, yeah. Four. It's 24. 24. <laughs> yeah. You think okay. so far okay. farming. You know, it's very rare. It's very rare. Yes. Because all youngsters, you know, their mind is about urbanization. What did I tell you? Like people no, adapting true. the Western mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the first thing we did was make sure we had a reliable water source. So we just said, you know what, let's go for potatoes. They have a long shelf left. They're stable and safe crop. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello guys, I hope I find you all. And today I am in Mashingo. This is my first time being in Mashingo. And it's really amazing. I am in Mushagashi East Mashingo. I'm here to interview this guy. He's a potato farmer and, you know, he came back all the way from abroad to start farming in Zimbabwe. And I'm sure that we're going to have an amazing time talking about farming in general, especially uh, potato farming. So how long have you been in, in, in Zimbabwe? Uh, since August 2023, so about five months. And I was born in Zimbabwe. Uh -huh. um, I left when I was three. Three. I came back August, so it's my first time after 21 years. 21 years? Yeah, 21 years. <laughs> so this is this is your first project? Yeah. Our Why first. potatoes? Uh, so, um, before we decided to, to like, uh, before we decided on potatoes, uh -huh. we were looking as into what crops we could get into. Uh -huh. We was looking at um, tomatoes, carrots, onions, so forth. But when I just felt like um, potatoes was the safest option. Okay. Yeah, so um, I actually took a trip to Zambia. Um, I met with a farmer from Zambia called Zed Farmer, Maria Zalumis. Uh -huh. And then uh, she just kind of like, you know, encouraged me to do potatoes. Okay. Obviously, my farm is in Mashingo. Yeah, I don't, Mashingo. I don't stay here full time. Yeah. You know, I'm back and forth between Harare. So the journey, it's, long. it's a long journey. Um, but it's, it's, it's part of the journey, you know, it's part of the process. Okay. The, the challenges you face along the way, I feel it makes the end reward a lot more satisfying to know what you had to go through in order for you to, to get there in the end. It seems yeah. like you're not going to give up. You can't give up, man. You can't give up. You have to keep pushing through. <laughs> I didn't come all the way here for no reason, you know. So, like, yeah. as of now, mm. we want to talk about young people yes, who are actually, you know, adapting that Western culture mm. and saying, nah, we are no longer doing our own thing. Mm. Like, as young people, we mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. We abandon our own culture. That's but error. here you are, yeah. after 21 years, yeah. You I'm are here you. in Zimbabwe <laughs> yeah. and you are investing time yeah. to learn your own culture. For sure. It's an error. Like, trust me, for, some, so for me, yeah. Like, but then again, not everybody is eyes are open to, to, to what yes. you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. And like I said, for me, I grew up in the UK. Yes. So I didn't grow up around Zimbabweans, you know. I grew up around mainly like West Africans and mm -hmm. Caribbean people because there's a lot of them where I come from mm -hmm. in London. So one thing about them, they're very proud about their culture. Thank you. Even in the UK, Thank you, yeah, Thank you know you. a Nigerian when, when you see a Nigerian, you know a Jamaican when you see a Jamaican. Whereas Zimbabweans, they like to hide, you know, they like to pretend like, yes. you know, they're not Zimbabwean. Why is this so? I mean, that is yeah. something that we have to address as Exactly, of now. exactly, yeah. Why is it our own people, mm -hmm. they don't want to show their own culture? Exactly, yeah. We, as of now, it's sort of like it's fading away. Mm. We barely have a culture yeah. in Zimbabwe exactly. that we can say, this is our culture. This is our culture. Mm -hmm. You can't tell that this is a Zimbabwean or Shona mm. speaking mm. person. You ah, can't. They'll speak with a funny accent. Exactly. They'll you see? tell you they're from SA. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's an error. It's an error. So for me, I always felt like, you know what? Like, these people, they love their culture so much. How come, like, for me, I don't even know my culture. Do you get a sense? So uh, for me, it's just a, it's an error, man. Even here in Zimbabwe, yeah. like, people are the same. You know, they, they forsake their own culture, which is not right. You know, you it, should, you should, you should, not. you should, you should definitely, like, a lot of people are running to the, to the Western world. Yes. But really and truly, like, you can make it here in Zim. I tell you, that's, that's the God's honest truth. No there's a lot the more, challenges. there's a lot more opportunities here. If you just ignore yeah. the, the, how can I say, like you said, the challenges yes. and just focus on your goal. There's a lot of successful Zimbabweans who made money here in Zimbabwe definitely. without leaving definitely. the country. So there's definitely... There's, there's definitely the opportunities here. You just have to open your eyes to them, you know. But then one thing I always say is, yeah. you never, you don't value what you have, you know. 
you only value something until you lose it. So that's why somebody that grows up in Zimbabwe, yeah. they, they may think there's more opportunities abroad exactly. because they can't see what's right in front of them. What, what do you think about you know, people, Zimbabweans, Africans, mm -hmm. who are in the diaspora, mm -hmm. do you think that they should invest back to their own countries? 100%. Why? Without, without <laughs> a doubt. Without a doubt. Okay. Uh, listen, let me give you an example. Okay. Uh, obviously, I know everybody's situation is not, is not the same. Yes. But here, my, my Suguru, my okay. granddad, okay. has 84 hectares. Of land. Of land. Yeah, thank Do you, you get a sense? Thank you for mentioning that. So like, do you think, if you think as a black man, I'm going to have 84 hectares in England? Nah. You know, like, <laughs> there's so much you can do here. Exactly. You know, and, and you have to invest back home, man. Thank you. A lot of people that leave Zimbabwe, mm. yeah, they end or just leave Africa and go to the West. Yes. They end up in a, in a never ending cycle of just working, paying bills, taxes, working, paying bills, until, until their pension. You understand? So definitely invest in Africa. Now is the time to invest in Africa. Thank you. There's an array of opportunities. Let me tell you something. The Chinese are here, the Arabs are here, and they are and they stay here. You know, they don't go back to their country. They come here and they stay here and they're making money. What about our own people? What about our own people? You get it? So Thank I think it's just, they just need to change their mindset and the misconceptions that they have about back home, you know? Once you like, you know, build a reliable system yes. and you're working with reliable people, yeah. you can't go wrong, you know. But you have to take that step, that first step and definitely and definitely invest back home. Once you change not even just Africans, just as human beings in general, once you change your mindset, yeah. you will go so far in life because if you feel if you're somebody that says there's no opportunities, yeah. you'll never see the opportunity. But if you say, ah, there's people making money here or there's people being successful here, but everybody is saying there's no opportunity. Surely there's something I'm missing. Your mindset is different to everybody else. You get it? Instead of what, what everybody else is saying, there's no opportunities. You're saying there's people that's doing something and they're being successful. How can I squeeze myself in there? Maybe I might not be at their level, but I yes. can squeeze myself in at the bottom and, and, and work my and work my way up. You get it? Yeah. So you're doing potato farming. Sir. What's the market like? Is it good or bad? So with any with any farming yes. uh, horticulture, it's a fluctuating market. Um, just over the festive season, yeah. uh, it was the market was really good. I think okay. it was about ten, okay. ten, eleven dollars per pocket. Right now, it's about seven, seven, eight dollars per pocket. But with the oncoming rains, um, yeah. the, the the price is due to due to raise. <laughs> Me, I don't know much about climate change. <laughs> okay, but I just know that rainy season. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, I'm I'm sure. I'm positive. The do you think the price the will be low or high? Higher. Yeah. Higher. So you calculated everything. Yeah, we've calculated, but you know, you always have to see how the market is. You know, like right now it's rainy season, but it's not raining. So yes, yes. Yeah, it's it's a fluctuating market. You know, you have to be, you have to know your numbers and just do it step by step. My advice is, listen, just just start. You know, you I know you have that idea in your head saying if I do this, yes. if I do that, it will be good for me. Just start. You know, stop pondering. There's a different. There's a, a good idea is is only good if it's executed. Thank you. Do you understand? You have to start. You you you'll solve the problems and face the challenges along the way but you start and you keep going even if it means that you're starting with with chickens or you're starting with what you can manage you know cabbage leaf um leafy crops whatever it is maybe it's not even to do with farming whatever yes. it is just start yes you exactly. know start according to your capacity and and grow and scale and yeah when you, you were living in the uk mm. have you ever thought that one day you'd come back to zimbabwe of course of oh. course, yeah, without a doubt. I say like the past two, three years, it's been on my mind constantly. Like I need to go to Zim, you know. It was uh, and it wasn't really for like business or anything. It was okay. just really on a cultural side. Yes, I just felt like you know you need to connect. I need with to your connect to my roots, yeah. Because you know they say if, if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you're going. You always need to go back to your genesis, you know. So Thank that's you. something that um, I definitely it's always been on my mind for a long time. Yeah. But it seems like on the cultural aspect, mm. it seems like you are dis disappointed a little bit because mm. of because of how we are doing it. I wouldn't say this. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say disappointed per se because there's a lot of people that's doing great things in okay. Zimbabwe. Thank you know, you. so I can't say I'm disappointed. Um, mm -hmm. Some like sometimes culture can be a hindrance yes. in terms of. You know, one thing my mentor always says is that culture is just frozen success. That's oh. it. So something that was successful 100 years ago, you're still running with that concept today. And things change. And things change. You understand? So it's not to say forsake your culture. It's carry your culture along with the moving times. Do you understand? I one understand. thing I realise about Zimbabweans is they're too nice. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. And if you want to Yo, be, you be successful... Thank you. Know, you. Tell us, be, If you want to be successful, yes. you can't be nice. You have to be ruthless to a, to a certain extent. You have to be, say, you know what? This is what I want to achieve and nobody's going to stop me from achieving wow. what I want to achieve. 
you know. That's but big. if you're too nice, saying, huh, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you'll hinder yourself. So that's why I mean, culture is good, but you also need to carry your culture along with the moving times, you know. So, yeah. Is there going to come a time that you travel around Africa? Um, for sure. I mean, I've been to Zambia. Yes. I've been to Tanzania. Oh. I've been to Mozambique and Eswatini. Yeah. You have been traveling just for traveling sake? No, or? for church. Yeah, church. yeah, Spirit Embassy. Yeah, like we have okay. um, branches all around. So like, you know, sometimes we'll have like a conference in Tanzania. Oh, okay. We had a conference in Mozambique. Um, Zambia was for business. Oh, okay. I went to go learn. Um, yeah. People barely do that, I'm telling you. Oh, like, yeah, Africa, Africa is beautiful, man. Yes, thank you. Thank Africa you for mentioning is beautiful. that. I, personally, I love Africa. Like me, I've relocated and I'm here. I'm, uh, I'll go back to visit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just no to problem. visit. No yeah. problem. But here, I'm telling you, this is this is where it is, man. I'm just just think about it. why are Chinese people here? Why are Arabs? And here? they're coming in their numbers. And I'm they're coming you. in. Their, they're not. They 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 here for a reason. You know, we can't let them steal away. I mean, obviously, Zimbabwe is open for business. Anybody yes. can come and do yes. what they want to do. But as people of the land, we should be the first ones to have a stake on on what's being done here. We can't let other people steal the opportunities from us. You get the it? only thing that we are good at is being employees to mm. those to those people the mm -hmm. chinese mm -hmm. and those people that are investing back into Let me tell you something. You see nigerians mm -hmm. nigerians are very industrious people anywhere you go around the world yeah there's you nigerians and they're doing business yes do you get it yeah they're, whether it's a mechanic or whatever it's a restaurant they're doing business do you get it and nigerians always invest back in their country I have a lot of Nigerian friends I grew up with. They always tell you my dad is doing this back home, my mum is doing this back home, but it's, it's always us. Ah, it's Zimbabwe, yeah. Akusi <laughs> Bo, like. Akusi Bo, ah. People are Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's, it's too many excuses, you know? So I think Zimbabwe, you know, Zimbabwean people in general, we have to change the way we think. For sure, man. For sure. For things to be better for us. I'm telling you. Instead of complaining like a lot, mm -hmm. like we do, our mm. ideas are more theoretical rather than practical. Than practical, it exactly. Practicality is the key. Like I said, an idea just stays here. Mm. Execution is what brings it to life. Thank you. This is execution. And you're doing it. And I'm doing it. It was an idea in my head. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Yeah. I came across Farm Buzz. And then from there, we implemented a strategy, a plan. And we're executing. And here you are. You're here in Masingo. In Masingo. Deep in the rural areas. My rural areas. Kumusha Wangu. Exactly. And yes. you're here. Oh, we're here. Come on. We're Getting your hands dirty yeah, in the farm. Yeah, we're here every, every week, every, every two weeks. Yeah. You'll be coming back. I'll be coming back. Checking if everything is in order. Mm. So. <laughs> but your Shona is getting better and better. Yeah, small, small. When I saw the irrigation, yeah. I thought it was sort of like a contingency plan. Okay, no. During no. this rain season. Yeah. Because we're kind of having like rain problems in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Exactly, like it wasn't necessarily a contingency plan, it was the original plan. Oh, okay. Because even though we're in the rainy season now, yeah. we're experiencing um, El Nino season, yes. which is yes. which leads to droughts, yeah. etc. Lower lower amounts of rain. Yeah. So you can't really just you can't just say because it's rainy season, we we'll rely on the rains and water bore. You know, you have to make a plan to make sure that you can execute your final product. You have irrigation as of now. Sir. Are you going to do farming throughout the year? Of course, without a doubt, crop rotation, whatever is viable, we we uh, we farm according to the season, according to the market, market You're into demand. Into horticulture. Into horticulture, but like, like I said, I want to progress into grain crops and. Yeah, so yeah. How many how many hectares do we have here? Of, two of two of hectares of potatoes. Two hectares of potatoes. And yeah, then we're. Mm. Uh, yeah. also planning to plant onions. Onions, yeah. O on the other side. On the other side, there's another hectare there, another hectare there. So, planning to do onions. Bro, your hands on. You, hands on, we're here. Man. You want this? Seems like you, you, you are always with him. And you, he's the uncle. Yeah, he's my uncle. And he has been living in this It's weird, right? Uh, like you're the older one, and then yeah. he's the young one, and you have to, to, to call him uncle. Uh, Sekuru. I'll just call him my brother, man. That's, that's the, uh, culture. That's the culture. Are you happy that he's here? Uh, I'm very happy. Actually, mm -hmm. this is a big opportunity for me mm -hmm. uh, to learn many things, you know, how to progress and do big things in life. Like he's teaching me and uh, I'm coping yes. with things from him. Yeah. I know you are the uncle, but at the end of the day, you have to learn from him. <laughs> I have to learn from him, but I've got no idea how anything looks, but as time goes, I will be nah, a professional. Nah, he's doing a great job, you know, like, right. honestly, operations manager, Maniyama, you yeah, know. Yeah. 
he's really he's here on the ground 24 7 so like i really appreciate him and, okay yeah. what about the food bro is it different you know the, mm. from the food in the uk that you eat <laughs> <laughs> yes i know i know <laughs> listen you yeah. see, see when i came to zim yeah i'm telling you eating sadza for breakfast lunch <laughs> and dinner honestly so like these days yeah you, don't even put sadza in front of me i don't, don't want to see it you know <laughs> Like it's been too much, you know. I, that's one thing I'll tell you about. Like you was asking me about the challenges. That's one of the main challenges is food. Because listen. Like, you we're used to that food yeah, exactly. in the UK. Like I told you, like there's, yeah. there's so much opportunity, like a like, uh, variety of food. Yeah. You want to eat Chinese, Japanese, Turkish, you could choose. Middle Eastern food, Nigerian food, Jamaican food. But here in Zimbabwe, ah, it's different. <laughs> From UK, he grew in UK. It's unbelievable. The richest country ever. Ah, oh, says, 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 says who? It's not you. Says who? We're the rich, we're the rich ones here. And here we are. He's 24. He's doing farming mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. Yeah. That's, that's what he has been telling me. Like, people don't have to, like, go to the UK. Oh, yeah. There is money in agriculture. We can make it here in Zimbabwe if we change our mindsets. That is true. That is true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bro, how do you feel like to be yeah. here back with, with your gr grandfather and grandmother? I mean, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> That's all I can say. You it's, know, it's, I, yeah. it's really great. Words, words will fail me, you know, to like, really explain like the definitely like even on, on a more emotional side, you know. OK. So, yeah, Sakura can tell you last time I saw him, I was three years old. Oh. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing. That's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we have to learn like a thing or two from what you're saying mm. as Zimbabweans and Africans in general. Mm. People barely go back to their roots, mm -hmm. you know, to their grandfathers yes. and yeah. grandmother. You know, mm -hmm. I think he's Zimbabwean, he knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. People barely go back. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of them, they probably go back on Christmas mm -hmm. and then the following day they come back. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that, thank you, Gogo. <laughs> 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 but here you are, you're here full time. Mm -hmm, you're facts. farming, you're mm -hmm. always interacting with your Gogo and Sekuru. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. Nah, thank you. So thank you so much, you know, for showing that side mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. nah, for sure. And it seems like your Gogo and Sekuru, they are very welcoming. <laughs> that is why you're nah, always they're very, here. they're very loving, man. Anybody <laughs> I bring here, they just walk in them as their own Umzukurus, <laughs> yeah. you know. So yeah, it's Sekuru, very welcoming, very loving. Zimbabwe used to be the breadbasket of Africa yeah. back in the days. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with young people like him venturing into farming, do you think we have a chance of going back to that in the future? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, definitely. I can see that. <laughs> you can see that. Yeah, I've seen uh, many uh, places where there are quite uh, farming activities yes. going on. Yes. So that's a good sign okay. that we are coming back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, the Zimbabwe will be the basket of Africa. of Africa again. Again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much, Sekuru. It's really encouraging. It's really encouraging. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You, so, thank yeah. you so much, yeah. Gogona Sekuru. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As for me, I'm a content creator. I'm a YouTuber. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Do you have like other YouTubers that you watch from Africa? <sighs> or maybe you don't you know at all? What? Yeah. Because like, this guy, I, f I think his name, the short guy, I think he's Nigerian. What Maya? Yeah, him. He's, he's from Ghana. Oh, he's Ghana. You, you watch his content? I don't, I want to say like, I'm not really somebody that, I don't really spend a lot of time like watching content. Okay. But I've seen his content. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely seen his content. What do you think of it? I think it's good, you know, I, like it talks about a lot of people that come back to their country. Exactly. Or a lot of people that start developments in their country. And there's another guy, I think he's Nigerian. Tayo Aina. Yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah, him. Really I, I, I've, I've seen his, uh, a few of his content as well. Um, okay. So yeah, you know, but like I'm not really somebody that really like spends okay. a lot of time watching. Thank you so much for, mm -hmm. for this wonderful opportunity yes, that sir. you gave me. Mm -hmm. Now, nah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I, I'm sure that you're going to do great. For sure. And thank you for the motivation so. mm -hmm. that we have to change our mindset. It's the mindset, man. I'm telling you, once you overcome yes. the hurdle in your mind, you go so far, man. Remember, a man can only go as far as what you can see.